Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. This week for the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue, we are creating the theme of It's Cold Outside. We were asked, what do you do when it is cold outside and have that be reflected in a craft project? So when it's cold out there, I like to curl up with a good book and preferably stay inside. And if I'm not reading, then most obviously, I am definitely in the craft room creating something. All right, if you'd like to see which supplies we're going to be using here today, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the crafty corner. To get started, I'm going to be pulling in one of the Sizzix die sets to create part of our background. We're going to be using the Tim Holtz Sizzix set layered stripes. And since our theme is all about the cold, I wanted to pull in some of the Ranger alcohol ink brushed silver paper as well. And that's going to act as part of our foundation. Now it is a bit too big, so easy enough. We're going to trim that down with the Tonic Midi Trimmer. And that's going to work as our base. After we can start assembling the layered stripes to go over the top. So let's go ahead and move those little scraps off to the side. All right, now I've already pre-cut the die pieces for the layered stripes. What we have here first is some Distress Heavy White cardstock, and I did use some double-sided sticky tape on this so that building our foundation will be nice and easy. So I'm just gonna carefully line this up, and then we can move on to the next layer. For the next layer, we're going to be pulling in some sparkling deco paper. Now, the deco paper on its own is really thin, so I doubled this up with some Distress Craft Stock. And this is going to give me a slightly heavier foundation that I can layer on to our card base. Now, on this one, I didn't add the double side sticky tape because the deco paper is rather hard to cut through, even with the precision base plate. So I've left that back side plain and we're just going to go in and add some collage medium so we could stick this down onto our surface continuing to build our background so right now i'm just going to run some thin stripes along the back of this and then we'll need to apply some pressure to get this stuck down onto the base i'm being pretty conservative with the glue because i am trying to avoid any unnecessary glue ooze okay so we've got this and we're just going to flip that over and very carefully apply that to our background. So I'm just going to line this up with the corners and that should put us in a pretty good position to apply this right down onto our surface. Mm. I love this wintry feel that we have with the brushed silver, the deco paper and the white heavy cardstock. That is definitely giving me some cold wintery vibes. Okay, so we have everything lined up. I'm just carefully pressing this down and we're going to be able to set this aside to dry. All right, moving on to the next step. Here, we're going to be pulling in a Distress Mixed Media tag and we're going to need some Distress Paint black soot. We're going to give this a good shake and then apply directly to the tag. I'm applying this directly to the tag because this is going to be a foundational piece for the project. And I'm just going to apply that with a paintbrush. I'm not going for a really heavy coat. I'm just going for somewhere in between. We just want to have some good coverage so we have a good solid black foundation to work on. So I'm just going to keep working my way all around the tag and just applying that paint as smoothly as possible. One of the great things about Distress Paint is that it is going to dry pretty quickly. Now with the black soot, I do need to go over some of the areas more than once. This paint tends to be a little thin, but with one or two layers, everything is going to transform into a lovely black background. Okay, that's looking good. Let's set that aside for a moment while it dries. Now we'll just give a quick cleanup at our desk. Nothing more exciting than a dash of water and cleaning with a cloth. Now we're going to bring in one of the detail elements. Here I have one of the baseboard windows from this year's Christmas baseboard collection. And I'm going to be applying a piece of acetate to the window. 
Nothing fancy, we've just roughly cut the acetate down to size, and I'm using some collage medium to apply some glue to the back of the baseboard window, and then we could just place the acetate right on here, and we'll have a lovely window pane to work with. Okay, pretty easy, applying, just tapping this down just a little bit to make sure we have a good seal, and there we go. That window will be ready to use probably in five minutes or less. So we have our window. Now let's go ahead and set that aside while it dries. While we wait for those elements to dry, let's pull in this picture from the 2023 Tim Holtz Halloween Ideology Layers Collection. We're just going to be coloring in this dress of this girl. And for that, I'm going to be pulling in some Distress Pearlescent Crayon. The crayon that I'm looking for is going to be Juniper. I kind of want a dark blue, but nothing too overpowering. But this is going to be a great color to work with. So I've got some Juniper Berry, and I'm just going to scribble that onto this slick surface. And with my finger, I should be able to spread this around and get pretty good coverage, since I'm just looking to turn the dress blue. All right, so just going in with a finger, and we're just going to move that crayon around, make sure that everything is evenly distributed so that we can have this lovely dress in that sparkling blue color for this girl. Once we're done adding the color, I am definitely planning on cutting this out because I'm going to be using her as the centerpiece of the card. I'm hoping to put her next to a snowy window while she's reading a stack of books. When it is cold outside, that is exactly what I do. I grab a stack of books, I curl up in my favorite chair by a window, and read. Preferably with a good cup of hot cocoa nearby. Alright, so I'm just finishing off these last little pieces. And just making sure everything is smudged out pretty nicely. If we go over the edges of the dress, not a big deal because we will be trimming this down. But I do want to be careful and not get any of the distress crayon on other parts of the paper. All right, so now we're going in with the tonic stips. And we're just going to cut pretty carefully around the edges of the girl so that she's going to be more of a freestanding character. Okay, so we have trimmed off all the extra parts and pieces. So now we can see about putting together more of our wintry scene. So I'm just going to move her off to the side while we pull in some more elements to work on. So I'm bringing back in the tag that we'd painted with some black soot paint. And now I want to add a wintry landscape to this. And to do that, I'm going to be pulling in one of my favorite stamp sets. We're going to be using some of the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous bottle brush trees. So this would be CMS 455. We're just going to pick a couple of trees here and there. I'm going to be using a big one, a little one, kind of a medium one. And that should give our background a nice touch. And again, that is CMS 455. Okay, so let's go ahead and stick them down to the stamping block. For inks, I'm going to be using a Distress Oxide in Mermaid Lagoon, Blueprint Sketch, and Speckled Egg. The Distress Oxides are going to pop really well on this black background, and I'm hoping the different blues are going to give us a great wintry feel for this part of the background. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead, stamp right onto our stamp using the ink, and then we will add that to our winter scene. Now for stamping, I just wanted to stamp the top parts of the bottle brush trees. I'm not looking to get the stem or the base. And look at that color. That is such a beautiful pop of color. 
that is a really, really pretty blue. So I'm just going to stamp a couple of trees here and there. Then I'll switch colors and stamps. Let's see. We'll just clean that off. And we're going to bring in a new color. And new stamp. So I definitely want to mix up the sizes and just get some variation here. Next, I'm going to be pulling in some of the Mermaid Lagoon. And I'm going to definitely do some overlapping on these, just so we're getting kind of a winter forest feel. More ink. And we stamp it down. Pretty good. I am definitely liking this quite a bit so far. Okay. And another one with the Mermaid Lagoon. Right there. Good. Next, we'll be going in with some of the Distress Oxide Ink Speckled Egg. So before that, I'm just going to give that stamp a quick clean. Speckled Egg is definitely one of the paler blues in the collection, so I don't want to drag any of the darker ink into that ink pad. I am going to give this a quick dry with the Ranger Heat Tool just to avoid any smudging. I really want that speckled egg to have a chance to pop on its own. So just giving this a quick dry, and then we move on to the next color. All right, time to pull in that speckled egg. So we're just inking up our stamp. Ooh, that blue is so icy cold. I absolutely love it. Okay, got that. We'll do another tree over here. Yeah, right there should be good. Great. Ooh, that is a good wintery look, especially on the black. I love that. The black really helps the oxide eggs pop. And eventually we're going to be putting this window frame right over the top of that. So that looks like a great place to stop. Next, I do want to add in a little bit of snow. And instead of using a paste, I've decided to use a gel pen. I'm just going to draw in some snowflakes just to add a little bit of variety to my normal ways of creating snow. So we're just going to meander all over this tag, adding in some dots. And now we're going to have some beautiful snow flowing in our window seed. So I'm just going to keep adding some snowflakes on this tag until it looks like we've got a bit of a snow flurry out among those trees. Mm. And the gel pen that I'm using, this is a jelly roll pen. It's a number eight. And I find that's just about the right size for adding details when mixing with stamping. Now let's bring our baseboard window in and we're going to attach this to the tag. We're just going to run some collage medium around the frame and now we'll be able to layer this up and we're going to have a beautiful scene outside of this window. So just finishing up with a little bit of glue here and there. Want to make sure it's going to stick down firmly. And let's place it. Ooh, that is just what I was going for. That is going to be good. So just going to line this up and we'll give it a little bit of time to dry before we go in and start trimming off the extra pieces with tonic dips. Now, the initial plan here is that I'm going to have this girl and she's going to be near the window with a stack of books. So while we're waiting for things to set up, we obviously need to create a stack of books. So we're going to be pulling in another mixed media tag and we're going to be stamping some book images on this. Now the stamp set that I'm going to be using is THMB024 Schoolhouse and look at these vintage books. These are going to be perfect. So I'm going to stamp the image twice using some Distress Archival Black Soot and after I have these all stamped out, we're going to be coloring them in with some Distress re -inkers. I definitely love stamping with the archival ink. It always gives a really crisp, clear image, and that makes it really easy when you want to add some watercolor detail to an image. Okay, so that would be stack number one. Now let's go in for stack number two. So again, just tapping down the ink until we have good coverage on the stamp. 
And then we could just step that out right onto the tag. There we go. And take a look at that beautiful images that we can now watercolor. So, of course, we're going to be pulling in with the Ranger Tim Holtz Fine Detail Water Brushes along with the Tim Holtz Distress Ink Palette. I love the palette and the little brush is the perfect tool for adding color to stamped images. So let's go ahead and go in and start painting. I'm going to be starting with a little bit of Mermaid Lagoon. And we'll just paint in one or two of the books before we put the rest of this on fast forward. I just want to get in there with a little detail brush and add as much color as we can. Here are the completed book stacks. These are nice and colorful. They definitely have a vintage -y look to them. I'm just going to give those a quick dry with the Ranger Heat Tool, and then we'll be able to start cutting these out. So now that these are nice and dry, I'm just going to be pulling in the tonic snips, and we're going to work our way around each book stack. So just take your time and carefully working around each image. All right, we'll be back in just a moment once we finish cutting these out. Here we go. These are our finished book stacks. So just moving some scraps off to the side and putting down the tonic snips, let's bring back in our other pieces that should be nice and dry now. So we would layered up these pieces on the window frame, and now I'm just going to work my way around with the tonic snips and trim off those bits of pieces that are overhanging. Okay, pretty good. So just got to check, make sure that nothing else is hanging over. And then we can put this right on to our card base. Okay. Ooh, that's going to look really good. I'm liking that quite a bit. Okay, so we're going to put our girl right there. She's by a window. And now I'm going to add that stack of books that she's been reading through. So we're just going to put that right there. I want that under her arm. Good. Uh, I think I'm going to need one more book of that stack. So I'm just going to cut this one that's at the bottom of the other pile. And that will give you a way to layer up the books. All right, I'm liking that with the book stack. That should be pretty good. I think I can glue that together when I get to the assembly portion. All right, now I want to work around the windows a bit. It's going to need some extra trimming. And to do that, I'm pulling in some ideology Christmas elements. I was thinking it'd be really fun to have some bits of greenery, specifically holly, decorating this window. So I'm just going to take the snips and we're going to be cutting off little bits and pieces of holly from a few different pieces of ephemera to act as decorations. Now, the nice thing about this is that after I cut these apart, I can definitely build things back up in little clusters by using parts and pieces from other bits of ephemera. And of course, we'll attach all this back together with some collage media once I have everything assembled. Now that I've got a pretty good idea about placement for greenery, it's time to start assembling the rest of this card. First, I want to add in our girl, and we're going to use some collage medium for that. Just putting that down, and then we could stick her in place. Okay, that's good. Everything's lining up quite nicely. Just tapping things down, making sure everything is going to stick quite well. Next, let's go in with the book stack. Again, more collage medium, and I'm going to be tucking the books right under her hand. 
Just moving things very carefully. There we go. Got that. All right, I'm definitely gonna have some overhang for the books, but not a big deal. I can always trim that later. And I did want to add to the book stack. All right, just gonna tuck that right under there. Definitely gonna have some trimming to do at a later point, but that will be an easy thing to do after everything is all dried. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at the book stack. It's pretty good. All right. Next, we are going to be working on attaching our window frame base to the rest of the card. So we're just going to be using a few foam squares, and that's to pop up the pieces that are not attached directly to the frame. And then we'll use some collage medium to attach the rest, I think. So I have a few small foam squares, and I'm just going to pop these on the back of the pieces that are definitely hanging off the edge. And that will give me a foundation that I can build on. Okay, so just getting a couple more squares in. That should be good. And now, of course, we can go in with the collage medium and just scribble that right on to the back here. So just trying to go for some fairly even distribution and then I'll be able to take off those two little backings on the other pieces of foam square. Okay, that should be pretty good. And now we're gonna to wanna to stick that onto our card base. So I'm not going to be centering this. This is going to be positioned fairly low because I do want that beautiful stripy background to show through a bit. Okay, right there, applying just a little bit of pressure to make sure everything is going to stay in place. Great. And next, I'm going to start adding all of that lovely greenery around the edges of the window. So just making sure everything's going to be held in place. I'll hold that down while I add bits of greenery. So I've got little bits of holly that I'm going to be adding in. And this is from my stash of Tim Holtz Christmas Ephemera. It is always so good to dive into the stash and find useful bits and pieces that I can add to a project. Okay, so I also have some bits and pieces from Ward Wallpaper. This is several SKUs ago, and there were some really lovely holly bits at one point. So I could use those as a contrast against these lighter pieces as well. That will give me a really great mix of reads in here. So we're just going to keep working our way around the frame and adding in those little bits of holly. I'm hoping the more I layer, the more full this uh, kind of garland running around the window is going to look. Okay, just slipping in another piece here. Not bad. Another piece there. Yeah, definitely getting really happy with this. I am... Very pleased with the way this layout is going. Okay, now that I have all the holly in place, we're going to trim off those extra pieces that are very much overhanging on the card. And again, just going in with some tonic snips, flipping this over so I don't have to agonize over exactly what I'm cutting. I do find it a lot easier to trim things off when I can't see all the good stuff that could potentially be trimmed off a card. All right, so... What are we doing next? Next, we are going to be adding some grit paste snowfall. Those windows are looking just a little bit too clean, so we're gonna add a touch of frost to them. Now, I don't wanna go overboard with this. We're using one of the Ranger palette knives, and I just want to scrape a little bit on the window so it kinda of looks like the windows are frosted, that we get this feeling that it's definitely cold outside. So I'm just gonna work window pane to window pane, adding a little bit of that snowfall grip paste into each of the corners because that's usually where frost gathers on windows. And we're just going to keep trying to smoosh that down really lightly since we don't really need a very heavy accumulation of the frost. We're just going to keep that really light and just try to work that in the best that we can. So far, so good. And once I have that all worked in, this is going to probably take at least 15 to 20 minutes to completely dry. 
Now, Snowfall is really magical. Once it dries, it's going to be semi-translucent, but you're definitely going to see some beautiful glittery chunks left behind. And that's what gives it this really cool and cold, frosty look when applied to windows. Okay, just a little bit more on this side. And we should be just about done. Ooh, I'm really, really happy with that texture in here. It's going to definitely add something to our scene. All right, just a touch more here. A little bit more creeping up that window there. And a little bit on this pane down here. All right, now let's go in and add a sentiment. So this is the 2023 Tim Holtz Ideology Christmas Sticker Book. And of course, we've got the perfect sticker, Baby, it's cold outside, and yes, it is. Today, I could safely say the temperature got down to a freezy cold 15 degrees. And here is our completed card for the theme of It's Cold Outside for this week's Funky Junky Inspiration Avenue theme. I am so happy with what we've created. We've got some icy cold trees out the windows. We have a girl who's staying warm inside while reading a book. And then we've got all sorts of little ideology embellishments all around. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner. And until next time, happy crafting.